Hey there, I'm Joshua Sheehan. Welcome to the RV Entrepreneur Podcast. The RV Entrepreneur is a community for RVers that are exploring ways to financially support themselves while living their RV life. And today we have the pleasure of talking with Bryce and Nelly from the Jerseys. Bryce and Nelly started documenting their adventures and hiding treasures on YouTube six years ago in an effort to get more families adventuring together. A planned six-month road trip turned into multiple years, full-time in an RV, and adventuring all 50 states. While on the road, they started a production company that now weaves into their online brand, The Jerseys. Continuing their passion of getting more families outdoors, they recently bought an RV park near Grand Teton National Park called The Park at Swan Valley. Their hope and vision is to create a destination that cultivates core memories for anyone that shows up. You guys are really going to enjoy this conversation with Bryce and Nellie. I got to hang out with them for the first time last fall at the RV Entrepreneur Summit, and then we've kept in touch throughout the year, and my family actually stayed at their new campground earlier this spring in Swan Valley, Idaho, and it was absolutely beautiful. It's a developing campground, so there's some sites there, some facilities, and then they've got major plans to make it a perfect place for everyone to come, and again, a destination that cultivates core memories, and a place that is a jumping off point, Grand Teton National Park. Yellowstone, and all of the things that Idaho has to offer. They are super knowledgeable in the content creation space, but they're diving more into the entrepreneurial aspect of RV life with this campground. It's been super cool to talk with Bryce and Nelly about the development of the campground and how their personal brand and their YouTube channel basically made it happen that they could buy an RV park and how that next chapter in their life with their family and a physical location is changing the way that they're living on the road. Before we jump into that interview, though, let's take care of our sponsor. The RV Entrepreneur Podcast is brought to you in part by RV Life Pro. Perfect for every RVer, you can plan your camping trips with RV Life Trip Wizard, then use RV Safe Navigation with the RV Life GPS and Campgrounds app. Both are included in RV Life Pro. Eliminate RV anxiety by knowing exactly where you'll camp, get fuel, and even grab lunch before you ever hit the road. RV Life has every campground, RV park, state park, and national park to fit your style. Plan your entire RV adventure, including fuel stops, rest areas, shopping, and entertainment. Go to RVLife.com and start your free seven-day trial or download the RV Life app from the App Store. Travel dreams made simple with RV Life. Now here's Bryce and Nelly. All right, Bryce and Nelly, welcome to the RV Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm excited to have you guys on today. We met last year at the RV Entrepreneur Summit at the campground in Montrose, Colorado, and I got to hear you guys speak and a little bit about your story. And so I wanted to bring you guys on today to just talk through your entrepreneurial journey of how you got into content creation and how that's led into kind of the physical world as well. But to start off, for someone who doesn't know your story, just give me a brief background of who are Bryce and Nelly. Oh, yeah. Who are Bryce and Nelly? Well, thank you, first off, for having us on here. Yeah, we're excited to be here today. Yeah, good to hang out again. So, background uh, on Bryce and Nelly. Where to begin? <laughs> Gosh. So, when YouTube was first becoming a thing, we'll start at the, at the beginning. Some of the very first videos that made YouTube become more credible, Devin Supertramp, Stuart Edge, Scott DW. These were creators in Utah that were making these novel videos, like jumping off the arches in Southern Utah tied to a rope and then all of a sudden turned to a rope swing or skydiving in Lake Powell onto a boat, different crazy things. That's where Nelly first started. I'll let her, she was, she was in the YouTube world when it started to become a thing. I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah. I just was in the videos and <laughs> it was just living life to the fullest. And Bryce on the other side, a little did I know, was marketing these videos. Yeah. These, these guys were just like, Hey, let's make some epic videos and see what happens from it. And long story short, I ended up getting invited to help market some of these videos. So we would, when a video was made, we knew it was being made. Sometimes we were part of that production and then the night it would go live, because back then we used to upload at midnight. That was like the best time. We would send emails out like crazy to MSN News, ABC, Good Morning America, Tech9, all these different websites. And they would all share the video because it was a crazy video and that would help it go viral. The video in and of itself was already going to go viral, but we would just add fuel to the flame. And Nelly, she was just living life and she was being the content and I I didn't know her yet. I was on the other side marketing these videos and we didn't really realize that till later, but um, that's kind of our first step into content creation. We met years after at a barbecue (laughs) and uh, kind of crossed paths before, but that's a long story. We met and then got married about two years later 
And while we were married, I was still at this marketing agency that had grown into a company called Shareability. And we were making viral videos for Pepsi, Pizza Hut, CMT, Famous Footwear, we had Sony. We were doing all these commercials on YouTube. We were the guys that they had all their other budgets and then they'd come to us and say, okay, now can you help us go viral? And it was so much fun. We would do the whole conceptualization of the idea, the production, post-production, and all of the marketing. We were involved in some big projects with Kobe Bryant, Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo. It was it was just a, a lot of fun. And Nelly was working at a law firm and loving that. <laughs> yeah, and it was just us two at the time. So we were just literally going on adventures every week. And we went to Moab. And one day we saw a van on the side of the road, this beautiful, what was it? Bo- how do you say it? Beauville? Chevy Beauville. Yeah. Beauville. 1974 or something like that. And it was green. And we were like, what if we, what if we bought that van? And we're like, no, and we just kept messing around. We stopped by it, got some information, started driving. I'm like, well, it's probably a stick. And neither of us really drive stick. Bryce kind of does. We were like trying to talk ourselves out of it called the lady and she's like oh no yeah like it's manual you guys can drive it and we're like or it's automatic automatic yeah and then so we that was like i think the first time we were like we can make choices <laughs> yeah. not based off of our work we could be those people and so we bought it and that's where we started more in our own content yeah and, and shortly before that actually too we nelly had a health scare And that kind of sparked this whole thing of like, wait, life can just change like that. Our very first YouTube video on our channel, it's still live. You can, anyone can go and watch it. watching it. It's so cringe. (laughs) It really, it really is. But at the time we were waiting on test results thinking Nelly had breast cancer and they were confident it was breast cancer. So we were waiting on those results and Nelly came home and was like, I had been wanting to start a YouTube channel, but she's like, all right, let's do it. Let's do a YouTube channel. If we can do it in a way where it's like going to motivate us to do adventures and hopefully inspire other people to adventure, let's do it. So we just turned on the camera. We didn't understand anything about cameras at that point, like white balance or audio or anything. We were just recording. I was on the always the marketing side, not on the video production side. And so once we committed to doing an adventure every week, we still kept our jobs. And then like Nelly said, when we saw this green van, it was like, wait a minute, what, what else can happen from this? And so... Two weeks later, we had the van and it felt so surreal. We went camping in it with our friends, Cameron and Shara, who helped us buy it. Like we wired him money through Facebook. He went and bought it and uh, went and picked it up. And then we're like, okay, let's go all in on these weekly adventures while we still keep our jobs. That was the beginning. There's so much more, but that's that's where it started. Yeah. If I could add to that too, again, going back to how Nellie, she was just in the content. She wasn't worried about views and how well the videos are performing. She was just always part of the, the adventures. And so when we started our channel, I was coming from the marketing side of like, okay, well, how do we grow? What are the KPIs we're looking for? How can we get longer retention and click through rate, higher click through rate. And she was just like, the reason I want to do this channel is to actually inspire people. I don't want them to watch more videos. I want them to get outside, which I did too, but I, it's easy for me to be like, to really dive into the business aspect of things and just to grow, grow, grow. And so I remember we're still on this drive talking about our channel and we were like, well, what do we do to actually see if it makes people change? And so I was like, what, should we just take this green van around and hide treasures everywhere? And if people go find them, we'll send them something cool. And it was like a joke. And then, well, yeah, (laughs) let's try it. And so that's what we did. We ended up connecting with other content creators, other families. The Norton family was a family we traveled with early on. We went with them down to Mexico, did a whole Pacific Coast trip up to Canada. That was kind of like our first real run. Yeah. And we realized we really liked it. The van didn't go on that trip because the van wasn't ready yet. We did a rental car thinking it would only be like a... couple weeks. Yeah, a couple weeks max. Two and a half months later, we returned the rental car. <laughs> we just kept extending because after that first week of meeting with Richie and Natalie, we were on this mindset of, okay, if we're doing YouTube, 
you just got to do the usual routine everyone does is you get a bunch of subscribers and then YouTube starts paying you. You can become a partner and then you make pennies on the views and then it adds up. And I remember when we got into California, Richie asked me, he's like, Hey Bryce, so you should quit your job. <laughs> and he's, he's like, now that you're, now that you're quitting, like he joked with us about how he was just going to help us quit so we could live life on our own terms. He's like, how are you going to make money? I was like, Oh, you know, just what I just had said, like get a bunch of views and grow. And he's like, no, how are you going to make money now? And, um, he helped us realize that with the skills that we had learned so far within my marketing company, you know, they working in a law firm that we knew things that could benefit other people's lives. And he helped us connect with those people. And so we started consulting others on creating content on marketing. And we got a few clients while we were on the road so that helped fund this rental car. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, we just wanted to keep spending time with them and keep traveling. And yeah, after those two and a half months, we got back and it didn't feel like home anymore once we got back home. So at what point along that journey did you guys decide, all right, we're going to go full in on content creation? And then what was the next step? Well, that trip, I think we were like, all right, we're doing this. We hid eight treasures along the Pacific coast, eight or 10, and <laughs> none of them were found. We thought it was so cool. We made these fun videos, got all these drone shots and- Not found right away. Yeah, they weren't found right away, but it was it was months later and we're like, oh, we thought this was a cool idea. And then the treasure survived through the winter. In the early spring, uh, Andy Proctor was the first guy. We still remember he found our first, this type of treasure. We had done like little treasures, but as far as this like big road trip type treasure stuff, he went and found the first one and the treasure box was already moldy and they kind of, yeah, he was like, this is like an actual treasure. And so we sent him a, I believe it was a heated jacket. We partnered with a company, uh -huh. Ravian Jackets that did that. And when he posted about it, another mom saw that video on Facebook and she lived in Portland, Seattle. Yeah, she was in Seattle. Too. Yeah. And she saw that we had hit it. So she just watched all our videos and saw we hit a treasure in Seattle. And she woke her kids up out of bed and they drove a couple hours to go find this treasure at night. And when they found it, she uploaded the video. Her kids are just so elated so stoked. They didn't even know what it's good for, but they found this treasure. And then her friend saw that who lived around Forks, Washington. No, she didn't live around there, but she traveled five hours one way. So 10 hours round trip to find another treasure with her kids. And, uh, and I just started. Yeah. That, that's when we were like, it was, I still remember watching those videos and being so happy seeing their joy. We're like, wow, like Nelly, you were right. The, this is getting people out. Like this family now has a memory that is sticking with them. And so we're just like, let's do this. Let's do it in all 50 states. <laughs> That's so tell me more about these treasures. Like, was it just a piece of paper that was good to exchange for something else? And I guess from a community building standpoint, like it sounds like you kind of stumbled into this as a joke, but it is an absolute genius way to get enthusiastic community involved in content creation because sometimes it can be very one-sided and or you know you just get a comment on a youtube channel but this is a really awesome way to get people out exploring like that was your goal but then it also you know them posting about it helps your brand but it also creates community around hey all these other people are out looking for treasures that bryce and nelly hid so then did you think at that point, like, what did the what did the treasures turn into? Was it something that was going to be marketing, and that was going to be a way you could fund it? As in, like, you know, partnering with different companies to provide treasures, but then also provide you income to keep traveling and doing more treasures. How did that all play out? So we worked with tourism boards, and we also just it was kind of crazy, but we just worked with everybody we came in contact with. So I would normally email out, get a contact for whatever adventure we were going to do. So for example, in Florida, we swam with manatees and made sure we found the right company that really respects manatees and all that stuff. And that was willing to give away a family pass. Usually we share a message. They love it. 
so after our experience, we obviously do a video on it. And then we would go on in another adventure, which is normally like a hike to somewhere iconic or beautiful. And we would hide these. We had treasure bottles and then we had little treasure chests. And inside them was a note that was like, basically just like, congratulations, you found the Jurgies Florida treasure. In order to redeem, all you have to do is post on social media, tag We The Adventures and whatever brand we were working with. So that was promotion for them as well. And then they got that. And then usually when they went and did the adventure as a family, they would then share it on their stories or repost about it or whatever. And so that's normally how it worked for us. I can't believe how smoothly that worked for us. Yeah. Well, Nelly did hit up a lot of companies and it was a new concept. So not many bit in the beginning. And then mm-hmm. it got to the point where it was like, yeah, we were being selective of what types of treasures to do. Well, and by that time too, we had learned. So one, we had those experiences with other brands that we could share with future companies, but also every state we went to, not every state, but a lot of states we went to, we got the local news involved and they loved it. They were excited. It was an uplifting story. And so we then had a ton of footage that we could send to other brands being like, Hey, we worked with ABC or good morning or or whoever. And they were like, that's awesome. They wanted to be a part of it. So the more we did it, it just drew a bigger picture that people could envision. And they loved the message that came with it. And it really came at no cost to them except for a free experience. And it was like a win-win all around. The cool thing too, that we didn't realize would happen was Obviously, only one person could find the treasure and receive the prize, one party. And no one would know it was found until they tagged us, and then we would reshare it. And so there was many times that multiple people had gone, and sometimes someone was slow to post, or they all posted around the same time, and you'd find an empty spot. But everyone who got there after the treasure was found, literally everyone... They were there was they were a little bummed, but they were just like, this was such a cool hike or experience. Like this was so fun. Thank you for getting my family out. And it really was something that Nelly had kind of manifested. Like this is what I want to have happen. And so in a way, the the real treasure was the experiences they were having as a family. I remember we hid a treasure. This was in northern Idaho for a like free flight tour flight and a dinner cruise. Yeah, dinner cruise. In Coeur d'Alene. In Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That's right. And when we, two hours later, it was already found. And wow. the family lived two hours away. <laughs> and so they saw our video and left right then and found it. And I remember saying in our video something like, when you find it, you got to jump off. You got to go cliff jumping off this little rock. It was like a 12 foot jump. And her son that was maybe, I don't know, 10. He was scared, but he jumped off because we said that. So we're like, oh, we got to be careful what we say in our videos. <laughs> but it um, was like something he normally wouldn't do. And he was like so pumped that he did it. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, just she, she sent us this long message about how grateful she was. She's like, there we were just sitting, watching on my phone. And then it became this like family journey to go together and she said, we would not have ever done anything like this. And it was so fun. Thank you so much. And they were more excited about that than the actual treasure. And right. Yeah, it was just, it was so cool. So those types of stories prompted us to do all 50 states. And um, we thought that we would do that in six months, but that took us two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, mind you, we like had a newborn baby Literally, I just had our first kid. She and was two months when we two got Two months. RV. We renovated the RV that we've never driven an RV before anyway in a month. And then we left when she was yeah, two and a half months old and did all 50 states. So Neither of us had ever been in an RV before. But maybe when we were little. Yeah, but no, never like. Yeah. Never driven one never until driven. then. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think having the goal of doing all 50 states is gives you an end point. But it also seems like a concept that could be ongoing. It could never end. Was it hard to say, we're going to stop this at 50 states? You know, working with tourism boards at all the different cities in every single state. I mean, you could be, you could be on the road doing treasure hunts for 10 years and still not get to see all the cool things out there. Was it difficult to put an end to it and then decide that you needed to move on to something else? 
That's a good question. Depending on the day. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> Being fully transparent, there were days where we had discussions. Like, I still remember one day Nellie's like, I'm going to fly home with Evelyn. And by home, she meant her parents' house. Or, like, we didn't have a home, just RV. And she's like, and, and can you drive the RV back? Because we just said it was such a awesome idea of doing all 50 states and it really was amazing. Every state we did something super fun, super memorable that, and we condensed it in a short period of time, right? Like every week we were doing something that before this chapter in our lives, maybe once a year we would do something at that scale. And then Mm -hmm. we would talk about it, you know, all the time with our friends. And now we're doing something at that level every week. And so a lot of hype going on, a lot of logistics and traveling and fines because we're driving on the wrong roads. And, (laughs) and then even just the the filming aspect, like we were in some of the most beautiful places doing some of the greatest things. And I was looking through a viewfinder on a camera and Nelly was right next to me, but we learned, we realized the hard knocks way of, Oh, like, you got to balance this out, even though we're doing something epic and it's so cool that we're here as a family and we're together 24 seven mentally, my mind was thinking about the YouTube viewers and the analytics and Nelly was worried about the news stations and getting them set up and, well, and a child and a, and a ch- yeah, <laughs> baby. And the, the most important thing obviously is a baby in our relationship. There were just all these other things that were demanding of our time. And so we, we had moments where we got burnt out. So depending on that, those days would be like, oh, I'm so ready to be done. Yeah, I think if we can go back, we would have done it a little bit differently. Oh, yeah. Um, Like, we didn't even have a car. We just had our Class A. And so, like, we would have to, like, go to the grocery store before the RV park. Because once we parked, like, we couldn't really go anywhere. It was never fully settled. Mm -hmm. We're driving it every day, pretty much. Basically, we're dreamers. And then if we think of something, we get really excited and we go for it. So for those of those who are listening, you're going to go big. Maybe just take some time to plan it out before (laughs) doing something like that. Because that was, it was hard. Because we were new parents and business partners. And I feel like we, and new RV owner, like it was just, a lot. So definitely I would love to do that again. Uh-huh. Me love too, it. Honestly. Maybe you just ignited something, Josh. Maybe it's season two, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you just we, hit a spark. Yeah, and we we did on that note, we did talk about okay, we'll finish fifty states and then we'll go R V in like New Zealand and we'll do mm-hmm. we'll carry it over there and then we'll go R V over in Europe wherever we can and maybe we'll do Sprinter Van. And once we finished, we finished in February, COVID hit in March, and we, that obviously changed some things. And sure. then we were, we, were, we were actually, Hawaii was our last state. We were actually hanging out with Garrett and Jess from the Bucket List family. And we were like, let's just live in Hawaii for a few months, like relax. We were pretty tired. <laughs> I'm not going to um, lie. It, after that, our content kind of took a pause because we had just push so much content out at such a just crazy rate that we were exhausted for a while. Yeah, and then our then Harvey started like really trending and we're like, oh shoot, we should have kept going. <laughs> yeah. At that same time too, that we took a pause to we got a place that we rented because during COVID and all the unknowns, Nellie was pregnant with our second. And mm-hmm. so we wanted to be near the same hospital where our first girl was born. And then right after Indy was born, Camping World reached out and they're like, hey, we'd love for you guys to be hosts for our Ultimate RV show. And so then we said yes to that and did more national touring this now time. RV. Yeah. And back in an RV and this time now with a fifth wheel. So not to jump too far ahead, but as we were doing that, we were trying to think of what's the next step. Like to answer your question about the treasures... If you ask us if we're done with those, if we ended that, we we didn't. We actually have something that's been in the works for a while that we're going to announce when the time is right and uh, dealing with treasures and family adventures. But we, yeah, we haven't, like even when we did the national tour with Camping World, we also hid treasures everywhere for that. And one mm-hmm. of those treasures was for a free RV. That was super fun. As we were touring around, we're like, you know what would be cool? Because we kept getting all these messages. Now that RVing was starting to pop again and people were really interested in it, there's still so many families out there that 
it's very daunting to go RVing or camping in their eyes. And so we thought if we could have a place that we could create content around and just say, hey, look, it's really easy. All you got to do is just get here. We'll have an RV you can stay in. We'll we'll show you the ropes or we'll provide experiences for your family. So it's almost taking Nelly's mantra of I want to create a channel to get to create memories for families to the next level where now it's like, let's create a destination where we can create these experiences. So we were like, that'd be fun on an RV park or something as, as we travel around. And we kept thinking, oh, we would do this better or this differently. And when we finished the Ultimate RV Show, uh, it started as a joke again. We were like, what if we got this RV park? And- no, no, Bryce <laughs> saw... <laughs> Let's <laughs> back up real quick. There was, not, there was no we in that part. Bryce found the campsite for sale. I saw it earlier and I just scrolled right past it. I Maybe saw it too and scrolled past it. But then a friend had talked to me. I was talking with a friend. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. And this friend and Bryce, their brains are the same. And he was like, well, what if, what if we did? And started talking. I'm like, there's no way we can do this. Like, you know how much money this is? Like, just, I'm just like, no, I'm shooting it down. And of course, like when Bryce feels good about an idea, like he just, he just can't let it go. And I'm over here like, we got two kids anyway. So here we are now. Yeah. Probably one of the like best pieces of advice, but also most dangerous is whenever you're thinking about doing something and it's daunting or big is to assume that it's already been done and in your mind be like, Oh, it's already been like, it's already been accomplished. How did I accomplish it? So you you take out the, the fear of the unknowns metaphorically where you're like, all right, we already did it. Now, how did we do it? And that my friend Cameron reminded me of that. He's like, no, 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 just, just go forward with like, how are you going to do it? Not how, not what if, but how. And so we started running numbers and zero experience with real estate. Okay. Um, I took some business classes, but I graduated in exercise science. I was going to change majors over to entrepreneurship. And one of my professors was like, the best education you can get is actually starting and running a business. So just get your degree and go. And so we had learned a lot with that within YouTube, but just watching all these videos and reading online of, okay, how to run numbers and how do you get loans with different banks? And I ended up reaching out to a realtor, Jimmy Rex, good friend in Utah. I was just like, hey, I don't even know how to start here, but I think this is something we're interested in. He connected us with a broker and they were like, yeah, I mean, you're buying a business. So you can use the revenue from that business to help you get the loan. And then the gear started turning and then Nelly started getting more worried because <laughs> it became <laughs> be more a potential real thing. I feel like we were finally in this, like we're thriving. Oh yeah. It's we true. have like, I'm not like, we were leaving pretty, living pretty like cush cush. We had a a nice amount in savings. I just kind of feel like we had our head on our shoulders and then <laughs> and now we're uh, in debt basically because we own a crazy huge RV park, which is going to be amazing and awesome. But it's really hard once you get to a comfortable level and you work so hard to get there to then be like, well, let's risk it again. I just was like, right. really? Do we have to? But we both felt good about it. And it's been a crazy journey but we just feel like god's hand is in it and so we're just trusting in that and hoping our desires of really wanting to bless a lot of other people's lives will help this just become more than we could have hoped for yeah so you guys now own the park at swan valley but talk to me a little bit about how you got to that spot i mean you guys had traveled all over the country you you know hawaii Alaska, and we're considering doing international travel. How did you choose that geographic location? And then once you did, what was the process like of, you know, you said you'd never done real estate before. What is something, maybe not the entire process of going through and buying the campground, but what is something looking back, if you could give a bit of advice to someone who's interested in looking at buying a campground, what would you say your biggest piece of advice would be to, to get them jumping off a little faster? Pray first, (laughs) (laughs) then talk to your wife. (laughs) You can take it from there. (laughs) Those those are very important. I definitely want to make sure you're both on the same page. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Because at the end of it all, it doesn't matter if you own half the country. 
half of or a kingdom if you lose your like if it puts a divide in your family Mm. then that's really like what's really valuable there right like we were talking to some friends actually just last week and uh the husband's considering quitting his job to pursue this dream that he has but we could tell in conversation with his wife that she was not ready for that sort of a jump and that was something that i heard myself saying to him was hey like yes this is a beautiful dream and pursuit and i'm all for it like i am probably the last person you should talk to because I will tell you to do it every time, but you got to make sure that you're both on the same page and to keep you not divided there. So, but I guess to piece of advice, talk to people that have done it before. And if you don't know anyone within the space, find people online that are posting about the space and reach out to them. People love helping. They really do. And that's what I found is reaching out to people and just being honest and saying, Hey, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is my desire. I don't even know what to ask. (laughs) I don't even know where to start. Can you point me in that direction? And that's probably the toughest thing is when you're first doing something for the first time, you don't even know what to look for. And that's why you see entrepreneurs that maybe they hit rock bottom, but then they all of a sudden become successful again is because they, the skills and the things that they learned that first time, they know what to look for the next time around. And so it can happen much faster and more efficiently. And the worst, the difficult part about starting anything is when you don't know what to look for. You don't even know what type of partners to get. You don't know how to find a good deal. So just asking anyone, we're, we're happy to help answer questions too. I'm not the most knowledgeable by any means. I've learned a lot, but I still, there's so much I don't know. And I, I love when people reach out and ask us questions We just had someone yesterday that was like, I want to do this, but I don't know what to do. And that's like the favorite start of a conversation for me. So that's probably a simple advice. And that's actually what helped us is we got to the point, we were on our eighth bank, Josh, that had said, yes, we'll fund this. And then they ended up saying no. And it was like, why are we even doing this? Like, and Nellie and I were not... (laughs) We were not in a position to buy an RV park. And so then I remembered, we we prayed. My mom actually, we had a heart to heart where she's like, you guys need to pray specifically. Like, don't just pray for help. Like, what do you need help with and pray for that? And so no joke, I actually prayed. It's like, okay, if we're supposed to do this, we need a million dollars <laughs> and someone who knows what they're doing to help us out. And that week I got a phone call from an old friend who was asking about other marketing stuff because I do consulting with that, with social media. And I was helping him with that. And then he asked what was going on. And I told him that, you know, we're trying to get this RV park. And he's like, hey, my dad wants to invest in RV park. He's got a million dollars that he could throw into something he just told me. And he's looking where to put that. I was like, oh my gosh. So you just get chills all over the place. Yeah. I was like, that's exactly what I prayed for. That's so funny. And as we went down that road, it, it ended up not being the, we had different visions with what to do with it. So that didn't line up, but through that journey, talking to other people met with another friend who's kind of a mentor for me as well and asked him, it's like, Hey, can you help me draft up a letter? I have never worked with investors. I've never got investors for anything. We've just always bootstrapped stuff. I still think this is a good idea. And we have like a few weeks left to close. And he helped me write up this letter. And then the next day he's like, Hey, actually I want to invest. (laughs) And he connected me with another, another guy. And so we ended up having this meeting with a few partners and it all just made sense. And, And they're like the best guys. They really are. They're the best partners we could ask for. They're letting us learn things. And like the other day I was having a conversation with one of them and he's like, Hey, you might've noticed that it seems like we're taking it. Like we're kind of in the stands watching you do this. We're purposefully letting you learn everything so that when we go to RV park number two, you know, all of the worries and the pains and the fears as you, as we bring on someone else to run that RV park and you can help guide Mm -hmm. them and coach them, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's super cool. So you guys have owned the park now for a little over a year. Talk to me about this past year. What have you learned about legitimately running an RV park, but then also, you know, trying to figure out how you balance your time between, because you guys still do content creation. You've now got a physical space 
where there's RV sites there. It's not like you're building exactly from the ground up, but you also have a bunch of property that you're going to be developing as well. So you're kind of, you're not totally done. You're not just revamping. You're doing both at the same time. And then also, you know, taking a different season of life of you're not traveling around. So you're going to, you're, you're static for the year. How did you balance all those different parts and pieces while also, you know, keeping the excitement alive for all that? I feel like we're still learning this. I think that so the RV park is definitely more than we expected, especially for Bryce. I've kind of let him, he's kind of more in charge of all of the nitty gritty work while I, you know, focus on our two kids. Definitely more than we both thought this would be yep. Yep. a lot. And even now we're like, okay, so when we first started this summer, we were there. I mean, we were there a lot, but our focus was getting the RV park ready and good and we kind of put jerkies on the back burner and now we're feeling that right now and we're like oh shoot we actually need to like focus on the jerkies and our rv park so i don't know if you guys know the intentional adventures potential adventures yeah ben and michelle ben and, ben and michelle yeah you you met them last year yeah they're seriously some of the best people and they've been rving for quite a few years anyway they have been like such good friends and they've been staying in our RV park. And I think they kind of saw firsthand us trying to balance it all. And they kind of sat us down and were like, Hey, like let us help you. And they sat us down and we've kind of found a new system that works for us where we can, because here's the thing. And maybe other people are like this, but because we're dreamers and Bryce, especially he's an entrepreneur. He gets a good idea. Like his mind doesn't stop. And so we have like 20 buckets of like mind blowing ideas that all can go so good, but we are only able to put a little in a bucket at a time. And like, we just don't stop. It's so hard to stop because there's so many things we can be doing. So I've gotten a habit of, Oh, everyone's good. Sweet. Back into fifth gear. Like it, <laughs> if everyone's okay, then it's like full throttle, baby. Let's go. Versus just enjoying that moment <laughs> where everybody's like, okay, and can breathe. So we are figuring out a system where we have the things we need to get done for the day. And once they are done at a certain time, we stop, which is something we're still trying to get a hold of. It's very hard. For <laughs> it's, it's so like, hard for price. Like after 5 p.m. is time to get ahead. But right. it's actually not. That's time to like just do family. We like have to have a rule. Mm -hmm. Like if I am in bed, you are not allowed to talk to me about anything work related. And it's so hard because at night his brain comes alive and he's like, hey, so what if? And I'm like, no, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down now. He's over there scribbling <laughs> in his notebook just like trying to get it over. out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. If you need it, if you, if you are awake and you have something in your mind, just call Bryce, please. Because he probably needs someone to talk to I will be your to. support group. Yeah, but that, that's true. And that's been a hard reality, like that you won't get everything done. And I had this conversation with someone else. She's an entrepreneur and she's a hustler and gets so much done. And she's like, I think you actually can. Like you can, you can accomplish everything that you want. And I disagree. We only, we only have 24 hours as Christina. And mm -hmm. we only have, but that, that quote that everyone underestimates what everyone overestimates what they can do in one year and they underestimate what they can do in 10. And within this whole aspect of things like what Ben and Michelle have helped us with is we make this list where we just brain dump everything, like everything that's on your mind that has to be done before. Like we just had an event. We had a retreat at our RV park at the park at Swan Valley mm -hmm. and we brain dumped what's everything that could possibly ever be done that you want to get done before this retreat and then we looked at this list where we had like 70 different things and we went through and we, we all voted together. Like, okay, do we have to get all of the weeds pulled before the event? Like if there are still some weeds left that we're not taking care of, is someone going to, or is the business going to go under? It's like, no. Okay. Then that one's maybe a low priority. And then we kind of right. went through until we had only a few high priorities where it's like, if we don't have the RVs here to host all of our guests, because this retreat, we had seven couples fly in. They've never RV'd before, and they all stayed in an RV for the first time. So that was one of those priority things of, if we don't have RVs here, will the retreat be a bust? Yes. Okay, that's the that's a high priority. 
And so then with these high priorities, then we schedule them all in. And so it's been better. It was funny. The first week we were doing this, it was five o'clock and I'm like, okay, I still got like, we still got five hours left in the day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. What? why is there no more slots here? Like I can put in three more things, four more things. And Ben was like, no, no, that's time of doing nothing. And, but actually nothing is when the best things happen. That's when you're with your family, dinner. And, and, and again, from me, I've project stacked. That's a phrase I really love is just stacking things. So if I can do three things at once, that's a problem, but I, I like that. So it's like, Oh, I love spending time with my family and providing for my family so if i can go on an adventure with them while filming i'm doing both at the same time so it's like we're working on the rv park with my family you know we're getting family bonding time and taking care of it so it just hasn't stopped for me so as far as balancing sorry this is a long loop getting to the point listing out what is absolutely essential and then you put in the rocks first and then you fill the rest in with sand and then the rest with water. And you have to have blocked off time of from this time every day, no work, just family. And I've noticed that our wick and the candle lasts a lot longer, if that makes sense. We don't hit burnout as often. And a lot of things too, we always build up in our mind, like I have to get this done now. Like no joke, there was something that I was like, my brothers always go on a family trip every year, maybe a couple times a year. We either go kiteboarding or like winter sports. And they had a trip planned in February. And I did not go this year because I had to get a certain commercial license for water rights and some other things done. And I was like, I have to get it done this week. I'm sorry, I can't go. There's still a part of that that's not done yet. And that's pretty humbling Mm. to be like, life still went on. I could have gone on that trip, but I didn't because of this task that I felt was the most important thing. And it is, there's something to say for working on something that you're passionate about. Like we're really grateful and we recognize how lucky we are to work on something that we care about so much. We feel like this is what we're supposed to be doing right now, but you still have to balance out the people in your life, like time for the people in your life. And so that's something we're currently learning right now, but that'd be my advice is have a hard rule, establish that with your people. Like, okay, what time every day are we just going to have for family time and don't break it. And you will mess up. You'll, it, but you'll get the hang of it. And then there are days where I only get one really important thing done, but I'm able to be more present with my family later that day because the thing that had to get done did get done. And the other things that would be nice to get done, I can get done tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. I'm curious to know, it sounds like you've only been doing it for a little while, but do you think it'll play out to be where, because you have a a restriction on your time that you're, you'll eventually, it'll, the time you have will be filled and it will be accomplished. You'll end up being more effective and more efficient with your time because you know, whenever that time comes around during the day, like I have to be done. And so sometimes the idea of, what you have to do expands to fit the time you have to do it in. Do you think you're going to get more efficient in the things you're doing? Oh, already. Yep. And then even to where it's like, oh, wow, I don't have enough time for me to do that. And then it's easier to justify, okay, let's dip into our budget to hire more people to help versus like, so yeah, yep. More efficient with my abilities. And then also realizing it makes it easier to justify hiring certain people because it's like, this is very priority and we don't have the time for it. So yes, it's, it's a very good thing that I think is worth anyone trying to master that. Very cool. So this whole thing started off with you guys wanting to get out, inspire people to get out and adventure with their families. This past year, you've kind of been hunkered down stationary at the campground. What do your future plans look like? And does it include adventuring and traveling outside of the immediate area of the campground? So the plan is so far is that campground will close. We'll spend holidays with the family. Yeah. We'll, we'll close it down in November. We do have an Airbnb cabin that we're going to keep open. But. And then basically January through March or April, we're going to be gone RVing in the warmer States. Yeah. We're excited to hit we're the road again. We're so excited. And then we'll come back in May to get our campground ready to open. And then we'll be at the park all summer. 
just waiting for all you campers to come visit. <laughs> yeah, it has. This has been the first year that we've sat in a general area. That's been hard. Yeah. Usually in summer, we're gone like all summer. Yeah. This is the first time we've had to like, yeah. Not do that. So <laughs> we're, we're really excited. And at the end of the season, actually, I just had a call in a few weeks. We're starting to laser level the ground and then excavation will pick up and putting in septic and water lines and electric lines and stuff. So we're figuring out if we'll get how much we'll get done before winter and then when I'll have to be back on site to finish all of that. So the goal is to launch, have like an a opening party Memorial Day weekend in May next year. Yeah, just have a amazing uh, summer. We just finished a retreat that I mentioned. So we're now actually figuring out what sort of retreats we want to do next year. And we're excited about the idea of having other content creators or influencers that have a certain niche about them to come and do a workshop at our RV park, but it would be like a three day thing. So two days of adventuring, whitewater rafting, hiking in the Tetons, going fishing, ATVing, and then one day of workshop where they teach all that they know and kind of these small type of huddle workshop events. And we're pretty stoked about that idea. So we're expanding to where next year we'll have around 40 RV sites, six to 10 tiny homes, six to 10 glamping, 10, a cabin for rent for families or large groups and an event center. That'll be pretty big dreams that, that will hopefully be in fruition by next May. Yeah. sounds like you're going to have a busy off season. (laughs) Yeah. I did. (laughs) We were talking about road tripping and stuff and I'm like, yeah, but we're also doing this. So. Right, we're, right. we're figuring that schedule out. Obviously, there's not much they can do when the ground is frozen. So, right, and that's, that's the benefit too, right? Of you, yeah. you're in a geographic location where you have to take a pause because you just can't do anything on the physical property. So, that's a boon for you guys. And it, it sounds like, based off of your personalities and and what we've talked about over campfires and stuff, is that that's that's good. That's necessary because I know Bryce for you, like you, if you don't have that external block, you just keep going. And yeah. so it's nice that the snow and the freeze is going to give you guys time to just to go out and replenish and then come back with the enthusiasm and the drive to, to get it done. And it sounds like it's going to be an amazing space that just having stayed at the park and just seeing the views, like being able to bring people into that space and show them that part of the country with the addition of all these other things of having an event space and place to gather is, is really cool. And it's, it's super exciting. And I'm, Excited to see, be able to see from the beginning through the fruition of the park at Swan Valley coming through to be what it's going to be. That pumps me up hearing that. Thank you. Thank you. And we were stoked that you and Coley and your family came out to to stay. And we finally have uh, hats and sweaters being shipped to us right now with the logo that we should have had when you were there. But <laughs> we're also a little indecisive, so that doesn't help. Yeah. But <clears throat> too many good options. Nice. I think. But yeah, thank you. We're excited too. It's it's a long journey that we're learning to embrace and find the joy in that. For sure. And I think that's also something very cool about where we're at as a society right now. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, in order to get the back end story of how something came to be or how a space developed, you'd have to intimately know the person doing it. And now with social media and the connectivity of the world, it's really easy to get a back end peak of how things happen, know the struggles, know the successes, but then also it ties people in the community of knowing like, Hey, I followed this from when they were in their class, A burying treasures. And now I get to go to their treasure in Swan Valley and just get to experience this place that that Bryce and Nellie have built. I think it's really cool. And it builds the community of your brand and your, your, not just your brand, but Bryce and Nellie, like the impact that you guys have on the world it's really cool. It gives me the gives me the the fizz. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. That that's been fun to see. You know, you kind of get used to when we go to the park every when we're at the park every day, I see what it's not yet, you know? And it's really it's awesome interacting with people who are coming for the first time. I love it too. We have one of the first families that stayed at the park this year. They came in May. And one of their first questions was, you did all 50 states. Why did you get an RV park here? 
in Idaho. And no joke, after they stayed for their week, they said, hey, if you guys know of any land for sale here, can you let us know? (laughs) (laughs) Because it is just a beautiful area. It really is. And it's so like rejuvenating. And if if you haven't been to Swan Valley, whoever's listening, you, you need to make time to go and it'll be well worth it. Whether you stay with us at the park at Swan Valley or anywhere else, it's a great time. And now that we have more excursions too, Josh, with whitewater rafting and ATVing and horseback riding and stuff, like there's, yeah, it's just a great place. That's awesome. So I know that there's people out there that have been following you guys, and there's also going to be a lot of people who have never heard your story and want to connect with you. Of all the things you're doing, give me the breakdown of where people can go to find you and where's the best place to connect. Wherever the platform they use the most, at the Jurgies, J-U-R-G-Y-S, we're active on all of them. I'd say probably most Instagram, YouTube, as far as responding back and on Facebook. And then you can also, you'll see our emails on there that you can email us to. We do have a Facebook group that you can find. It's linked in our Instagram account where like-minded adventure people can join. And we're trying to build that adventurous community again to empower more people to do that. But Yeah, that's where they can find us. And if they want to come stay at the park, where's the best place to do that? The park at swanvalley.com. Yeah. Or even if you just Google the park at Swan Valley, you'll see it on Google Maps. You can text us from there. Yeah, don't look on Apple Maps. Look on Google Maps. Yeah. Apple Maps is catching up. And when you text there, it goes right to my cell phone. And it's it's, everything is ran by us right now. And so just through Google, you can find that number and ask any question about anything in the area. And yeah, our, our goal is to where every person feels wanted to provide them with a core memory when they come. Very cool. Very cool. Um, if anyone is experienced or has ideas, we're total sponges. So again, I don't know what I don't know. And if, and if someone has an idea or experience within developing RV parks or what tiny homes, tiny homes or anything like that's the beauty of the internet, right? We are sharing openly our experience on YouTube and on Instagram. Some things we wait until after it's approved because <laughs> we don't want to mess up the permit process, but hopefully through the beauty of the internet too, people that are wanting to be involved in a project like this, they can reach out and uh, we can like-minded people build a awesome destination for countless families in the future. So the door is open for that. Very cool. I'll make sure to have all those links down in the description of the episode. Bryce and Nellie, thank you for taking the time out of your day and thank your girls as well for letting me steal cool. you for a little while to yeah. uh, record this episode. Until next time, thanks for being on the podcast, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Bryce and Nellie. They are some of the most genuine and authentic people that I've ever met and it's been a pleasure getting to know them over the past year. I'm really glad that heading to the RV Entrepreneur Summit last fall connected me with them and that we've been able to foster a relationship and a friendship. And I'm excited to see how the rest of the park at Swan Valley plays out. It's got so much potential and the brainchild that they have of what it's going to turn into is absolutely insane. If you want to connect with Bryce and Nellie, either for their social media stuff or the park at Swan Valley, I have links to all that in the episode description. And I highly encourage you, if you are going through Eastern Idaho, definitely look at staying at the park at Swan Valley. The scenery in Swan Valley is absolutely amazing. You're sitting in the valley and there are mountains all around you, super close to the Tetons and Yellowstone, and just a super great place as a jumping off point to explore that part of Idaho. And again, Bryce and Nellie, you'll never meet kinder people, and the experience staying at the Park at Swan Valley was super awesome for me and my family. I'm working on getting my thoughts and decompressing from the RV Entrepreneur Roundtable, and that's going to be the episode next week. It's actually going to be my first solo episode, and I'm kind of nervous, kind of excited for it. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited to give you my thoughts and reactions and just decompress, do an after-action report of the event from my perspective and also kind of go through some of the feedback that we got and how we can make it better and just give you guys a a little glimpse into putting on an in-person event because it's awesome to have the event for the community and those folks that can show up. But I also think it's an opportunity to be able to share what we learned, how we can make it better in the future with the rest of the online community that wasn't able to attend because I think everyone is hungering for in-person meetups and the more information we can share the better those in-person meetups will be when they do happen. So look forward to that coming up. Until next time, I'll see you down the road.